Hello, hello. Happy Monday, everybody. First, let me start by saying, if you were watching like 15 minutes ago, um, Ecamm had done an update and as it was coming back online after the update, it automatically went live and I didn't notice for like 60 seconds or so. So if you were watching and you heard me curse, I apologize. Um, technology being what it is, sometimes things just happen. And so I apologize. I hope you guys had a great Monday. I had to think about whether or not today was actually Monday. It is because we're doing live chat here on Facebook. So I hope you had a great Monday. It has been insanely gorgeous here today. In fact, um, I'd say 9.30 when I got back from my run this morning, it was already like 17 degrees here in Southern Ontario, which is absolutely fantastic. So yay for what almost seems like summer weather this week. I will take it. I will take it. I will take it. I do not want any more cold weather. I do not want any more snow. As you guys can see, I have a little tiny light on my desk. It's just a little light um, turned on just so that there's no shadows on my actual face. But as you guys can see, the light in the office is not on because the sun is still up. And I am super excited about that. If you guys were watching Instagram and I think maybe on Facebook I might have posted it yesterday um there's a short video about the sunset from yesterday down at Sunset Beach which I'm so excited that we are hopefully this year going to be able to get back and watch a couple of sunsets together over the next few weeks it's that time of year and it just makes me so insanely and super happy and I am grateful to live where I do because we are surrounded by beaches. So even if I can't make it to Sunset Beach, even if things are busy down at Charles Daly, there are lots of places that we can go. So hopefully over the next few weeks, not only will we get some sunsets, but we'll be able to actually get out now that lockdown is over and maybe experience some live Facebook Monday nights from different locations around the area. It's going to, of course, depend on our numbers and sort of what's going on here in the region, but I'm just excited to have nice weather. I've planted some of the garden already. It's growing indoors instead of outdoors, just in case it gets too cold. But as you guys can tell, I've also had my lashes done. So thank you, Colette. Shout out to Lumi Lashes. Um, we went a little bold and brave this time, if you can see. Um, I'm just, I'm super excited that life seems to be getting back into the swing of things in some way, shape, or form, and I hope for you life is as well. Tonight we are going to talk about an article that I read last week, mostly because I was kind of shocked by some of the stuff in the article, but on the same hand I wasn't, and I want to know what you guys think, how you feel about this topic, and I want to know whether or not there's anything that wasn't in the article that maybe you're still feeling. So the article was based on the things that we fear now that we didn't fear a year ago before the pandemic. Things that people are worried about, things that people are uncomfortable with, things that people may never do again, which is kind of a big statement. So bear with me, but the article listed, I believe, nine things in total. I don't know that we'll get to all nine of them tonight, and some of them are kind of obvious and some of them aren't. So the first one, of course, is shaking hands which isn't really interesting, isn't really breaking news in any way, shape, or form, because let's face it, a lot of people probably aren't really going to rush back to shaking hands with other people. It's not something that we're really super excited to get back to. I think we're probably going to see a lot of fist bumping, a lot of elbow bumping, a lot of sort of like nodding at one another. But I don't know that handshaking is going to come roaring back once people are vaccinated, once we have a, a proven vaccine that stops the spread of COVID. I'm still not sure that it's going to be something that comes roaring back. At this point, the data says the vaccine that's out there or the vaccines that are out there um, may or may not stop the spread. They certainly stop you from getting sick. But because of that, I don't think handshaking is really going to come back in a giant way. I don't think there's many people who are in a big hurry to get back to shaking other people's hands. And so they talked about that in this article, how people are now terrified to shake someone's hand. And I wonder if part of that is just because we've heard so much over the last year just how easy it is for something to spread and so now people are thinking, obviously, COVID, but they're also thinking other things like the regular seasonal flu, colds, other kind of diseases. 
And I think over the last year, we've kind of learned that not everybody was washing their hands properly prior to this COVID outbreak. So people are a little iffy about that as well, because now people are like, well, if people aren't washing their hands properly in general, what else could they be carrying? So I'm not sure handshaking is coming back. And this article talks about that, talks about how some people just don't think they'll ever get back to a place where they're willing to shake hands with other people. So I'm curious as to what you guys think. Do you think shaking hands is going to come back? Is it something you're going to be willing to do at some point in the future? Do you think it's kind of now become a thing of the past? Let me know in the comments whether you're watching live now or watching on the replay. Just post in the comments and let me know what you think. That was the big one, obviously, and that one was pretty easy from the article to say it was going to be an issue, but the other one was just sharing. So there's nine in total. We'll see if we can get through all nine before 730, but one of them was just sharing public spaces with people. So sharing things like space in a park, going to a trail and walking a trail. And I found this interesting in two parts. One, because it's outdoors. And most of us, especially here in North America, have been told it's okay to be outdoors. You still want to try and maintain a little bit of distance. But if you can be outdoors, you're safer than if you're indoors. So I found this interesting because they talked about outdoor spaces as well as indoor spaces. And of course, indoor spaces like restaurants, movie theaters, things like that, people were terrified of. People are terrified of. Now, that's not the case for everybody. There's a lot of people who aren't nervous about it, and they're happy to get back to those. But there are people who are nervous about it, and that's understandable. But the outdoor spaces I found interesting because I'm going out every day for a run, Of course, I cross the street when I run into other people, but I never thought about some of these areas where you have a really small walking trail where maybe you do end up closer to someone than six feet. So are you fearful of that? Is that causing people to avoid going outside? It was a great question raised in this article because I don't think a lot of us have been putting a lot of time and thought into that specifically. So I'm curious as to what you think. Are there things you've avoided doing this year in outdoor public spaces over the last 12 months because you were worried about how many people would be there? As I was reading this article, I got thinking, there are definitely things I've avoided. I've certainly avoided going to Niagara Falls because you guys have seen me post some of those pictures. It's crazy busy. There's tons of people who aren't social distancing, who aren't wearing masks. So I've avoided all of that outdoor space. But there's also other places. We have a lot of really great walking trails here in the Niagara region, and I've avoided a good chunk of them. You guys know if you're a regular viewer or member of the Chasing Happiness community, you know last year I barely went to the beach to see sunset because the beach was packed with people. So I have definitely avoided some of those public spaces, both indoor and outdoor. And I don't know how much I'm going to run back to them once it's safe to do so. Outdoor spaces I'll probably be a lot more comfortable with. And going to the beach last night to see sunset, even though the beach was busy, people were still maintaining social distance. Some people were still wearing masks. I, of course, wore mine. Not something you have to do outdoors, but it was nice to see that people were keeping their distance. People were trying to be respectful of everyone else who was there. So I'll probably be more likely to go to outdoor spaces, shared outdoor spaces than indoor spaces. Although I do have to tell you, it's killing me not to go to the movies. There's a couple of really big movies coming out that I really want to see in theater just because, you know, having the big screen and the surround sound, those things are important depending on the kind of movie you're seeing. So I don't know. I'll have to see sort of how I feel about all that, what the protocols are at that time. But that was something that people had talked about in this article about being fearful of, that they had never been fearful of that activity before. So I found that really interesting. Dating was one of the things that was listed. I don't know how I feel about this. So you guys let me know. I'm not currently dating anyone. But I wondered if... Lots of people have tried to start dating people during the pandemic, what that would even look like. I guess you do a lot of stuff virtually or via text message first, and then when you thought it was safe, maybe meet up at an outdoor location. I'm not entirely sure how it works. And some of the people who were interviewed for this article talked about how uncomfortable that was and how fearful it was for them. And so I found that really interesting because... 
for a lot of us, we might not necessarily have thought about that as something that we could be fearful of. Because for the last year, we've either been isolating by ourselves, with our family, with our friends, whatever the circumstances are. But if you are someone who's interested in dating, what does that look like? How do you have awkward conversations about, are you going out? Are you seeing people? How are you doing that? What precautions are you taking? So I could understand why some people might be a little fearful of dating in this sort of COVID environment and what that looks like. But it was interesting because in this article, they actually talked about the fact that some people not only are dating during COVID and starting relationships during COVID, but there are people actually moving in together during COVID. There are people who are getting married even though they just met each other during COVID. So I found it really interesting to hear different people's perspectives on dating and relationships during COVID. It's not something I think we ever, as a society, thought people would be fearful of. Not in this particular way, anyway. So I found that really interesting that it was one of the nine things that was listed in this article. I'm curious as to what you guys think. Do you think, for all of your single friends, or do you think it yourself, if you're not in a relationship, do you think dating is something you might be fearful of during COVID? Is it something you would think twice about doing because of COVID? How does that all sort of play in your mind? Let me know in the comments. The next thing that was in the article, which I found super interesting, was helping people in need. And I had to really dig deep into the article to find sort of what they were talking about and what that meant. Because to me, when I first heard it, I thought it meant like giving to charity, financially, um, giving to the food bank, those sorts of things. But that's not actually what they were talking about in the article. What they were talking about was stopping on the side of the road because somebody had a flat tire or stopping if you f saw somebody fall off their bike. People are fearful to do that, which really surprised me. Sorry, I'm going to take a drink. That really surprised me because especially here in Canada, where I live or where I've lived on and off for most of my life here in Canada, I was surprised to hear that people are afraid to offer assistance, which is something we were always raised to believe is just the right thing to do. And as you read through the article, you actually start to understand why people would be. People don't know whether or not that person has COVID. They don't know how many people they've come in contact with. They don't know what the circumstances are or what is going to be required of them if they do help. And so I'm torn about this because I can understand why people would be fearful, but I'm also really sad that people are. And I'm really sad that it sounds like, based on what they were talking about in this article, that people aren't offering assistance as often as they typically would because of that. So I don't know how we solve that as a society. I don't know if it's something as simple as putting a mask in your car so you have it in case you need to pull over. Or offering to call 911 but not getting out of your car. I don't know what those circumstances are. And I'd love to hear what you guys have to say about it. How you feel about it. Have you stopped to help anybody during all of this? I know a lot of people aren't even leaving their houses. So the fact that you happen to go out and run into someone in need, to me, I don't know. I just feel like I would have to pull over. Even if I only pulled over to call 911 and get assistance or whatever the circumstances are, I feel like I would need to do that. I can't imagine not doing that, especially with as little as I leave the house. But I don't know, it's different for everyone. So let me know what your thoughts are. Would you pull over and help someone in need? Would you get out of your car? Would you maybe pull over but not get out of your car? This article raised some really valid points and it's something I don't think we have been fearful of in this way. I can tell you as a woman, I never pull over in the middle of the night when I am by myself, regardless of circumstance, because there is a, an inherent danger in that. So there are certain things that I think, as far as helping people, we have been fearful of previously. I don't know that we have been fearful previously of this particular issue. So I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know how you feel. Hi, Tacey. Hi, Billy. Um, I'm torn. I'm very torn about this. And 
I'll be interested to see how quickly that changes back once COVID is over and once it's safe to sort of interact with people. But I've been the girl who's pulled over as I was driving by because someone was laying on the side of the road. So I don't know that COVID would necessarily stop me from doing that. But based on this article, it has been stopping a lot of people. Another thing that's in this article that people are fearful, fearful of is spa services. Totally understandable. I'm not sure that I would necessarily walk into a spa right now, although I will tell you, and Billy, I'm sure your wife can attest to this, if I had the option to go get a pedicure and everybody was masked and everybody was safe, I'd absolutely jump on the pedicure train because I need a pedicure. Um, but spa services like facials where you can't wear a mask, I don't know that I'd necessarily be in a hurry to do. I can understand why this is something that people are feel fearful of now. I can understand why there is a fear-based concern about facial services specifically because anything that requires you to be close to someone's face requires you to be in the proximity where you could possibly get sick. Regardless of masks, there's still an inherent danger there. So spa services, absolutely. It's kind of up there with handshaking for me. I feel like those should have been really the first two things on the list, but you know, I didn't write the article. I just read the article. Eating out, of course, was on the list because people are concerned about being indoor restaurants, sitting close to other tables. Think about some of the restaurants you've gone to. Think about how close you sit to the tables that are right next to you. This one didn't surprise me. This one I think a lot of people are still fearful of. I think a lot of people will continue to do takeout, will continue to order um, curbside or even sit outdoors on patios. I think that's going to be a big thing again this year. But inside the restaurant, I can see people not really being in a hurry to get back to that. Another one was office space. Working inside an office space, and Billy, I know your, your wife does this fairly regularly, but I know they've put some pretty decent precautions in place. Um, kids parks. Billy, that's a great one. Kids parks. I have heard here in Hamilton, well, here in the Niagara region, um, Hamilton specifically, they're not opening water parks this summer in part because of that. Um, they're worried about the number of people that are going to be taking their kids, the number of people that are going to be in those spaces. Kids parks here in St. Catharines specifically were fenced off for a really long time. There was no playground available to take your kids to because of how concerned they were with kids picking up COVID from another kid, how many people would flock to those areas, what the transfer rate could be. So yeah, Kids Parks is a great one. It wasn't actually on this list of nine, which is interesting. I'm surprised by that. I wonder if most of the people they interviewed didn't have children. Um, it was an American article, so maybe there's a difference between how many of those are accessible in the States versus how many are accessible here. But Kids Parks is a great thing because I'm just trying to play through in my head like on a regular day without COVID prior to all of this you would see like 50 families in one park right kids playing on the swings and the slides and the you know seesaw teeter-totter thing that's not something even now now that parks have reopened essentially um, they're not fenced off here in the Niagara region anymore kids can go to the park to play you're lucky to see maybe one or two families in the whole park allowing their kids to play on the equipment. So that's a great one, Billy, because I think it absolutely should be at the top of the list. It's not like you can run up to the slide and like Lysol the whole thing before your kids get on it. Although I suppose realistically you could, but I don't know many people are going to do that. So that's definitely something that could absolutely be on the list. Um, it was not on this list, but eating out was, there's two last things, and I hope we can get to them because we only have like 10 minutes left, but one of them surprised the heck out of me, and that was eye contact. Eye contact was on this list. People are afraid to make eye contact with people, and I'm still not even sure really how to process that. I'm very much an eye contact person. Um, I'm torn because I had to actually read through the article to figure out why people are afraid to make eye contact with people. And it turns out part of the reason is because at the beginning of the pandemic, 
there was a lot of fear that people would get angry with one another, I guess, based on the people that were interviewed. So like you're standing in a grocery store, if you make eye contact with the person in front of you, they might get so agitated that they like beat you up or something, which was like alarming to me. Now, I know people have gotten really close to me in a grocery store over the last year. I've had to ask some people to back up, but I still make eye contact with them. I don't know that I'm fearful of eye contact at all. I think certainly there's an aspect of eye contact that has changed because of the masks that we have to wear. You figure if you're just looking at someone and all you're seeing is their eyes, it's really hard to tell whether they're smiling, whether they're having a good day, whether they're angry. But I think it's still possible to tell those things. Like when I smile, I lose almost all of my eyes. I think those things are still possible. And I think making eye contact is a big deal. I think it's really important. So I was surprised to hear just how many people are afraid of it, just how many people are fearful of eye contact now. It seemed silly to me, but also, I guess, understandable once I read the article. Because if I was afraid that the person in front of me was going to harm me in some way, I wouldn't want to make eye contact or acknowledge them either. So I don't know. I guess it kind of depends on who you are, right? Billy, you saw 20 to 30 kids in the park this weekend. That's a lot of kids, especially for your area. You don't have that many people. Um, wow, that's absolutely crazy. Hello, Brenda. Thank you for joining. Um, yeah, that's kind of crazy. Although I can understand, like, parents have been locked up with their kids, especially because we've had winter weather. So there hasn't been a whole lot you've been able to do with your kids. There hasn't been a whole lot of places you've been able to go or see or take them to. And kids are going stir crazy too, right? Like, I don't blame them. We are all itching to get outside once winter ends. Kids are too. And Billy, I'm sure Sydney really just wants to spend time on the trampoline and in the backyard, right? So I get that. And I think that's why we're seeing a push, especially here in North America, for more people who have kids to get houses instead of apartments so that they have yards that their kids can play in. Um, but yeah, that's a lot of children and I'm a little overwhelmed by that number. So stay safe. I know you guys are keeping the kids pretty safe, so I want you to stay safe as well. But let's talk about the last thing that was on the list because I think this one's going to be a little controversial. And then I think in some ways, some people are going to be like, I miss it so much. So the very last thing on the list that they talked about was people are afraid to hug. Okay, deep breath for all my huggers out there, because I know there's a few of you. I'm not going to give up on hugging people. I'm still going to hug people with or without a mask on. I am a hugger. I will hug you when I see you. Billy, I will hug you. I will hug your wife. I will hug your kids. Brenda, I will hug you when you're comfortable with it. I am a hugger. That's just who I am. So for me, not something I'm fearful of. Now, I'm certainly not going to walk up to strangers and hug them. I'm not going to be running down the street hugging people. But I don't think I'm fearful of going back to hugs. I'm very much like a friend of mine who some of you know named Lou who I will probably give like really long awkward hugs once this is over and it'll be like you know two or three minutes of a hug instead of the typical like two to three second hug but I like hugs and I miss hugging my friends I miss being able to hug the kids that I know like I don't think I'm afraid of hugging anyone Again, as I said, I'm not going to be running around hugging strangers anytime soon, but that's mostly because they're strangers and I don't know them. Once I get to know people, especially once I think we're in a position where we're a lot safer, people either have been vaccinated or COVID is, you know, not as dangerous as it has been. I think it'll be fairly easy for me to hug people in general. Um, there's a conference that I typically go to every year where I always hug people, new or people that I knew before or people that I just met. Um, so yeah, I don't think hugs are going anywhere. Do you guys think, like, are you going to stop hugging people? This article really 
drove home the fact that the people that they had interviewed said they wouldn't hug people. They probably wouldn't feel comfortable hugging people outside of their own family for at least another year or two. And some of them said they may never go back to hugging. And I can understand why, because there's a couple people in my personal life who I know will probably not go back to hugging anyone. And that's okay. I get it. They were never really huggers to begin with. So this has kind of given them just a great excuse to be able to hug someone or not hug someone. Um, And they'll probably never get back to it. But Brenda, I see that you just typed, no, you're not. No, you're not giving up hugs or no, you're not going back to hugging people. I'm curious. I 100% am hugging people. That's just who I am. I will continue to be a hugger. But it was interesting to hear people talk about the fact that they're afraid of it and that they're fearful of going forward, even once COVID isn't a thing anymore, provided that we get there, that they're also fearful of what else could spread. I'm hopeful that a year or two down the road, once we're sort of out of this really intense COVID window, that people aren't so fearful of the what ifs. What if another disease comes? What if we end up in this position again? Now, granted, I can't say with certainty sort of how that's going to work out or what it's going to look like. Um, Brenda says she's definitely not giving up hugs. She will hug. you got a hug coming your way, my friend. You've definitely got a hug coming your way. Um, but that's the thing, right? I think it's going to be very much a personal preference for everyone. And I think for some people, that fear of what if the next thing could be spread by a hug is going to be something that sticks with them for a little while. But I'm hopeful that as time goes on, that becomes less and less. And I'm hopeful that if those people are worried, but they still want to hug someone, maybe they'll put on a mask or do what they need to do to feel a little more comfortable. But I definitely think hugs are not going away. Handshaking, maybe. I think handshaking might be a thing of the past. We'll see. Um, And since it was the first thing they talked about in this article, I think I'm probably not alone in thinking that, but we'll see what happens. I definitely think hugs will come back in a big, meaningful way. Because so many people have been deprived of contact with other people. So many people have been deprived of that connection with their friends and their family. So I think hugs are here to stay. I think handshaking is probably going away, but we'll see what happens. What do you guys think? Is there anything that isn't mentioned in that article that you weren't afraid of a year ago, but you are now afraid of, or that you have concerns or fears about? Other than the things that they mentioned in that article, I'm sure there was other things that probably came up in some of their interviews, but my guess is these nine were probably the big ones that kept consistently coming up. It was an interesting article to read, um, mostly because some of it I hadn't really thought about. I hadn't really considered how fearful people could be of just being around other people in general. And certainly if you're somebody who's at high risk or you have a family member who has compromised immunity, I can understand that that for you absolutely would be something that was fearful to you. Billy says malls. Malls. You know what? Malls is a great example, Billy. I'm trying to think. When was the last time I was in a mall? I think last summer when we came out of lockdown, when we were all allowed to sort of visit places, but we had to do it with a mask and at like 30% capacity, I think I walked into a mall then. I literally walked directly to the store I needed to go to and walked exactly out. And the only reason I did it is because that store doesn't exist outside of an indoor shopping mall in my area. So malls is a great one, Billy, because I think you're 100% right. I think absolutely people will, for sure, be partially fearful of malls. And I wonder if that will lead us to outdoor shopping malls like we have here in the Niagara area. The outlet mall here is an outdoor shopping mall. So yes, the stores are all covered and inside, but if you're walking around the mall itself, it's all outdoors. And that allows for better ventilation. That, of course, allows for people to space a little bit better. So maybe we'll start to see things like that a little bit more. Brenda says, what about the ones that do the double French kiss, one on each cheek? 
It was not mentioned, Brenda, and it wasn't even brought up in the article, which is interesting because they did bring up hugs, but not the kissing of the cheeks, which I would think would make people a lot more nervous than just the regular hug. So that's a great point. I can tell you I will hug people. I will not be kissing people's cheeks. I will not be double kissing people's cheeks anytime soon. That's interesting. I had not considered that one, Brenda. So thank you for bringing that up because you are 100% right. That is something that people probably are fearful of. They should be a little bit, especially because we know the water droplets in our breath can carry COVID. So if you're kissing someone, not only are you hugging and getting close, but if you're kissing someone, those droplets are being left behind 100% without any doubt on someone else. So yes, absolutely. Let's add that to the list because I will definitely not be doing that anytime soon. You guys have some really good ones that they didn't mention in the article. I kind of want to write them and be like, well, what about this? Because these are great examples. Kids at the park, kids playgrounds, malls, French double kissing, whatever they call that on the cheeks. These are all great things. You guys are awesome. I adore you. And as you can tell, the sun is obviously setting because it's starting to get a little darker in here, which is why I turned on this one little tiny light that I have. But you can barely see behind me. So that's how I know it's 730 and that the sun is setting. But I am so excited because it means realistically going forward for the next few weeks, we won't need to have a light on if I'm in the office and we're doing live chat. But it also means we're going to have some live chats outside and we're going to be able to enjoy the outdoors, whether that's at the beach for sunset or whether that's just me walking around somewhere else, maybe surprising you guys. Um, I'm super excited for all that. So thank you for taking part in live chat tonight. Thank you guys for coming every single week. I love and appreciate that you join me while we talk about all this stuff. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you got outside and enjoyed some of the wonderful weather, especially here in Southern Ontario. It's been great and I hear it's going to be great all week. I love and appreciate you. Have a great week, guys. I will chat with you next Monday. I'm sending you all the love and light I have. Have a wonderful week. Bye.